love me like she does. Oh, she does. Yes,、yeah, she does. And if somebody loved me like she do, oh, she do. Check out this lovely Aspen Pitman microphone. Now, if you're not aware, Aspen was a, a good friend to us, to say the least. A really lovely fellow, one of the smartest guys and one of the most well-liked guys in the business. I'm sure you know, but he owned and started, founded Groove Tubes, which, of course, is an industry standard for high-quality valves or, of course, tubes. And he invented so many things, incredible stuff, and was a total sweetheart and just a really big personality. Funny, had stories about Jimi Hendrix. So, anyway, there's a, there's an interview down and a studio tour link down below. So check that out. Now, since his tragic death, his daughter and her husband Yuri, they have taken over the business, the family business. As it were, and it's lovely that they are both now running the company, and they put out this mic, which was designed by Aspen. It's called the AP One B, and it's a FET AP, obviously for Aspen Pitman. It is being sold all over the place. I think you can actually buy it in Sweetwater. We'll put a link down there. The cover that we decided to do that you just heard was "Don't Let Me Down," one of my favourite songs. It's actually one of my two favourite Beatles songs. The the John one, don't let me down, and and the Paul one, of course, for me is Hey Jude. I'm sure you have strong opinions. Let me know what your particular favourite Beatles tracks are. So let's solo the tracks. This is unprocessed. Now you've got obviously Joe Carell's mix coming up. He mixed it for us, which is really wonderful. I like having this idea of having somebody else giving us their. Perspective. So don't forget, you can download the multi tracks. This microphone is about seven hundred and fifty dollars, I think, street price. I think it sounds wonderful. 
have a listen for yourself, download the multi-tracks, let's check some stuff out. So for Fernando's bass playing, here is the amp. I love it. I mean, it's buzzy and clicky and awesome. Flat wound, you can hear the pick on the strings. Pretty freaking awesome. The DI is obviously not uh, one of Aspen's mics. It's a DI. Yeah. There's actually a lot of low end on the amp. So when you come to mix it, you could probably just use the amp. A little bit of compression on that and Bob's your uncle. This is my 1967 Hofner Galaxy bass. It's got the same electronics as a Hofner uh, Beetle bass. Same controls and everything, but it's a solid body. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds, and I love recording with it. And it's got the flat wound labella strings, which are fun. I'm running that into my Magnetone Twilighter, which is a guitar amp. And that runs into a Legend cabinet, uh, an old 80s Legend cabinet, which is Birch. Uh, 112 Celestian, which is in the other room. And then my DI of choice is the IK Multimedia Z-Tone, which is a really amazing box, which has really, really good um, ability to change the tone and also change the impedance. And uh, it's got a really fat sound. And this is, uh, I run all my guitar tracks and all my bass tracks through this. And it's also a splitter, so I could do uh, DI and amp at the same time and it runs on phantom power which is a lot of fun i'm actually going to do a mixing video myself using some plugins so stay tuned for that that will be coming a couple of days after this let's have a listen to the overhead so this is a pair of the ap one b's on the overheads it's a really simple setup that snare and kick. Here's the kick. Throw in the snare. Overheads, put in the bass. So this is what we did for the drum sound. Um, this is Eddie Zine's 1976 to 1977 Holland Oates touring Gretsch kit, uh, parts of it. And I put tea towels on it to get that Ringo sound. Um, with these Aston Pittman mics, what we did is we did uh, Glyn Johns. So that's the Glyn Johns triangle, measured the distance between the uh, snare and the top mic, and then made it equidistant this way. And then we've got a snare mic. Uh, we've got the same mics on the snare kick and uh, overhead, middle, uh, overhead, right. Um, and uh, yeah, we got a really nice classic sound. Peisty, uh, my favorite cymbals, uh, Giant Beat, Giant Beat, 2002, uh, Dark Side of the Moon style ride. And then I've got this really cool, it's a Zinn from the 60s, British Bill Bruford type cymbal with rivets. Uh, it's only got two, but it's got enough rivet sound for everything. Actually, it's down to one rivet. That was just one rivet. I'm losing rivets on it. But yeah, this is uh, the you know Stairway Studios kit, and uh, that's the sound. I just had Chester Thompson over from Genesis and Weather Report, and he required the full kit. So we had uh, three toms on top, two toms on the bottom. I didn't have enough preamps, so I decided to run everything through my Soundcraft Signature MTK22, which is a 22N USB console, uh, kind of like the Tascam that was just uh, reviewed on this channel, but it's the Soundcraft version. And I kind of love that because it's got ghost preamps. So it's the same preamps as the Soundcraft ghost board, and they're very clean. So any processing will dirty it up, but we have a nice clean signal coming into the board with great conversion. Now we had two singers on this. We had Caitlin, who you've seen many, many times on the channel. She's also a musicologist. She is a professor at UCLA. And she was doing the background to V, who is an incredible singer, also happens to be an amazing piano player, and actually has been teaching our daughter to sing and play piano. 
wonderful, wonderful singer. And V just had a baby. And in this video, I think she's about eight months pregnant. So this is the two girls together. Don't let me down. Don't let me down. Just absolutely wonderful. So tones are fantastic. So I wanted to do something that I loved, cover a song that I loved. And actually, originally, I was, I was going to sing it, but decided not to, basically because V and Caitlin are better singers. <laughs> Me on guitar. Guitar parts are so good, and they're mirrored in the original version with Billy Preston on piano. No compression, no EQ. Don't Good musicians, great singers. Down. Fernando knows the Beatles. Don't I know the Beatles. Maybe one of my favourite songs. You, you would hope I'd know how to play the guitar part. I'm in love for the first time. Don't you know it's gonna last? It's all done with really inexpensive equipment. All the stuff we did at our end is through our audience. And Fernando, I think, uses, I want to say, a Yamaha digital mixer. It has a digital interface in. The point is, is like, no expensive mic pre's and compressors were harmed on the way in on this. This is done really inexpensive. So you're really hearing the microphone capturing great performances. So thank you, Autumn. Autumn is Aspen's daughter and her husband, Yuri, for letting us use these microphones, and being able to give one away for free. So please click on the link down below to enter to win one of these lovely AP-1B FET microphones. So let's check out Joe Carell's mix now. Hey everyone, it's Joe Carroll in the mix room to talk about what we did for the mix on Don't Let Me Down featuring Aspen Pittman mics. When you pull up a song like this, you know, you have a choice to make on how modern you make it or how much you pay homage to the past. And because the, the arrangement is very, very traditional to the original, I felt like really respecting the original to a point, but using a handful of modern tools. And I did use a, a form of a tape emulation as the first insert on all the instruments being Phoenix here, uh, I did for my EQs almost exclusively use a solid state logic channel strip two, which is a, like a modern uh, SSL 9000 type sound. So the EQ is, is fairly modern sounding, but I want to talk about just a couple of things. I did multiple sets of things on the drums. I have a, a, a raw drum bus. I have a parallel compression drum bus, which is very normal for me to have those two things going on m most every day aside from, you know, like jazz, Broadway, things like that. But I was also using parallel distortion, which is not overly common, but I, I definitely do it. But it, it, it just added a grunge factor that I thought was fun. It's a little less pristine. Uh, you know, recordings from that era nece aren't necessarily pure and, and, and hi-fi awesome. Sometimes that little bit of crunch and grit from those old mic pre's and the tape machines and everything are, are part of the charm. So um, that was, you know, probably grasping to try to recreate some of that energy. But one thing that I did do, and I do this when I capture either poorly recorded rooms or I get drums that were recorded without any room mics whatsoever, but I I don't want to use like a plate reverb or something like a lexicon or a Bricasti. I want something that sounds more like a natural room. There's a little trick we're using an aux sin, just like you would a, a, a reverb sin, but, you know, uh, bring up an aux track. And instead of using reverb in its traditional sense, you use some of these new tools that emulate rooms, you know, like recordings of, uh, uh, you know, I guess you'd call it an IR or impulse response of an actual studio space. IKA Multimedia makes some great ones from Fame and Sunset Sound. But what I chose today from Universal Audio is Ocean Way. 
And I'm using the mid and the far. And let me mute all the, yes, I've got all that muted. So you're hearing only the room emulation. How do we treat rooms nowadays? We run them into an SSL with fast attack. I mean, that's one of our, you know, as mixers, that's one of our favorite tools. So that's what I did. Fast attack, fast release to get some sustain out of the room. And I, it looks like I did EQ it just a touch, but here's after treatment. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the drums without any ambience, uh, just, just completely dry as recorded. That's great, right? But again, I wanted it to sound like it was, I'm looking at the drummer in a space and not just so close. So here is with the room added. So it's different than sending, you know, just the snare or just the kick or, or I mean, Tom Toms or something like that to a digital reverb. And I love that approach too. But some days I wanted to, I just want to be looking down at a drum set in a room. So I send little bits of everything, kick drum, overheads, hi-hat, everything. But because it's on Oxens, I can adjust how much. If So if I want a lot more snare uh, and Tom Toms than I do the kick, you know, I can, I can accomplish that. So it's a, that's a fun trick using tools of this type. Okay, so that's thing number one. Let's talk about this keyboard uh, part. This song was one of them where back then they, they over, you know, had some overdrive to it, which was probably kind of new at that time, you know, to intentionally distort a vocal. Uh, but, but that's what they did. They, when Warren and the guys recorded this, uh, they emulated some of that. Okay, so I added some grit to the drums. The vocals have some grit. So this keyboard part, was way too clean in comparison. Okay, so what I did is I brought in the DSP 6050, and I love this tool when, for distortion, but pleasing distortion. They have three modules here. This one, this one, and this one. And I chose the D100, and I hope that didn't change the preset, but getting just a little bit of a DBX style compression into that with just a touch of EQ after it, followed up rather by the SSL uh, with e even a little more upper mids. So let me, let me play you that keyboard part one more time raw, and then I'll add the grit, okay? With grit. That, that sounds a little nasty, but in the mix with the distorted guitar, with the distorted vocals and the drums that have some grit, and even the bass guitar that has some grit, that keyboard needed that to find its way into the speakers to be as important as everything else. And here it is in the blend. It doesn't sound overly distorted compared to anything else at all. So, but but on its own, you you know you can hear it. But anyway, the sixty fifty from DSP, one of my absolute favorite tools for that purpose. Okay, let's talk about one other thing, and that is the soundstage. So sometimes when we're doing old uh, vocals uh, or old arrangements, or, or even modern arrangements that just have very little instrumentation, you know, maybe there's just a little bit of stuff that where we can spread something to the left and something to the right. But they're the kind of things that if we put them hard left and hard right, it's it's just way too much. And I felt like that's what was happening here. I needed them to wrap, you know, to be to the flanking the sides, the left and right of the vocalist but not extreme because it sound, it just sounded goofy. I tried that. So what I did is I brought them in. You'll look at the pan knobs here. 41 on the guitar and on the keys, 22 and 100 because that was a stereo track. All right, so now how do we still otherwise make it sound big and modern and use the full soundstage that we have? And one little trick to doing something like that is to literally take the just the effects return, like a delay, and pan it hard the opposite of what you have going on on the dry signal. So listen closely and you'll hear the delay of the guitar uh, pinging around over here far right, even though the guitar is leaning left. Ready? The 
just an old trick that it is just as useful now as it always was. And I'm doing the same thing on the keyboard. So we do have some ambience and bouncing uh, things going on uh, in the extremes, even though the dry instrument is not in the extremes. And that is spring reverb you're hearing, by the way. You know, why not? I, I love old spring re reverb sounds. One of my favorite, what was I using? Yeah, Big Sky. Uh, the Big Sky from Strymon. I love the spring settings in there. And I was using the tube. It's just, a, that's a, an incredible patch. You know what? Let's talk about one other thing. I said I was, I, I didn't have anything else, but I do have something else. When you're working on multivocalists, whether it's a, a duet, a trio, a quartet, one person's on lead, right? So they need to be a louder, a little bit louder than everyone else. So musically, we need to know, hey, this is melody and this is harmony. Um, that's where some of that music theory comes in handy. And, and we need to balance everyone accordingly. But what you'll find every once in a while uh, it's pretty common for impact in vocal groups to go to what we call unison, meaning instead of being the harp, this singer being a third above or a third below or whatever the case may be, they're doing the singing the melody as well. So for a few lines, they they go to unison. They're singing the same notes, and what happens is the apparent vocal volume, even though you don't change it, seems to jump up too loud uh, compared to the track. So what you'll find uh, if you look right here. That's the level I was running in the chorus for this uh, for the lead singer, where all of a sudden here you see it it noticeably drops a couple dB, you know where it would have been there otherwise. That's because they are singing unison, and this is an example. I'm in love for the first time. Don't you know it's gonna last? Then they'll go back to harmony for the rest of the song, and then you can you know pull the pull the lead singer back up and the harmony part back down just a little bit. But you'll, that's a common problem you'll encounter. You know, again, automation is the key to that. Making sure you just get your hands on a fader or a mouse or whatever, and make it can, the vocal seem consistent with the track uh, throughout. A little couple tips and tricks for you. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to click down below to enter to win one of these lovely AP-1B FET microphones. Thank you again, Autumn and Yuri, for letting us do this. And I hope you enjoy the multitracks and you have fun mixing. And don't be afraid to add some of your own overdubs or re-sing it or replay it or do whatever the heck you like. And of course, if you're an Academy member, you can put it up inside of our academy and mix it and we will mix critique it. So don't forget, you can also join the Produce Like a Pro Academy. And if you haven't already, please get the book. Thanks everyone. So long, farewell, la vie de say and au revoir. Adios. Goodbye.